This year marks the 65th anniversary of Hatch. And you know, all of us in the Hatch family were deeply proud of our achievements over that period. But most of all, we're deeply grateful to our clients, many of whom have been with us throughout that 65 year journey. Over that period, the world has changed. And as you can expect, Hatch has changed along with it. Today, we're faced with some very serious challenges in the metals infrastructure and energy sectors. And you know, they're amongst the most complex and certainly the most globally impactful challenges that any generation at Hatch has had to face. But now the clock's ticking and the world needs our response to these challenges. Uh, in those 65 years, we've gone from a population of 3 million to almost 8 million. Economic growth has been unparalleled. You look at the glines and they go steeply up like this in a way we've never seen in human history. People are living longer. Our expectations for lifestyle, for how long we live, uh, have grown phenomenally. Um, and industry, agriculture, the world around us has improved its productivity immensely which in turn has spurred a new kind of economy, a growth around services, notably. Of course, we have to remember, all that was powered by carbon. It's been an era driven by fossil fuels. Climate change has two key challenges that are flip sides of the same coin. The first is the, the drivers behind emission reduction initiatives, whether it's policy changes or technological advancement or shifting access to capital, and the impact that those will have on economic performance. And then the second challenge is if those drivers don't result in emission reductions or the required level of emission reductions, then we're going to have increasingly severe and an unpredictable weather, and that will also have an impact on, on economic performance. There are many technologies that are being developed right now that are going to lead to carbon-free future. There's technologies like carbon capture, energy storage, fusion, and SMRs, and they're all really exciting. As we move towards electrification, it will change the entire power market. For example, greater use of electrical vehicles and using electricity at different times will cause a major change to the grid. We'll only get there if we continue to invest in technology and innovation. Unlocking green power sources won't just meet the challenges of today, it will help us to invest in our collective future. I think the big problems we're tackling right now are firstly, climate change and the need to find a good energy transition to help us tackle the problems of climate change. Secondly, building and delivering smart digital assets for the future. Third, helping create communities that are strong, that are focused on the future, and have good food and water access. And then lastly, finding that new growth through productivity in our industry. Food accessibility is a very, very important topic. As the world's population increases, the availability of arable farmland is diminishing. Um, and so the productivity or the yield that occurs on that arable farmland needs to increase in order to meet that growing population. Accessibility is also related to the variability we have or are seeing in our climates and the result that has on our weather. At times, crops can be ruined because of those changes and or over the long term due to climate change, the crops we grow in our current locations may also have to change. With these challenges that are more complex, we totally understand that the expectations of our clients and the communities in which we live well, they're becoming more demanding as well. Today's governments, uh, our resource companies, power producers, they're all looking for that elusive, sustainable balance between community acceptance, environmental stewardship, and of course, long-term economic resilience. Our clients are thinking about it more from an external view. How are they impacting the communities in which they operate? And they, they did to some extent, but a lot of it was still, you know, within their control. So how do they control their operational footprint, their own operations? How do they reduce impacts, environmental impacts in their own operations? And now it's really 
It's at the core of their essence. So do the products and services that you offer create value for society? Do the impacts that you have maximize social value for the communities where you operate? It's a good thing for communities to be part of the project, to have ownership in the project, because they are going to be there after the project leaves. Project proponents need to really consider what the impacts could be when the public does not want to advance a project and how to overcome some of those uh, concerns and how to overcome some of those questions that are coming from the public. It could have real impacts and consequences on your project timeline, on your deadlines, whether your project goes through, but all this can be managed. And really it's managed through a process of understanding those concerns of your stakeholders. Most of our clients around the globe and in all three sectors have fully funded and fairly active corporate social responsibility programs. They incorporate them in their day-to-day -day business, but also in their projects where Hatch does partner with these clients. I guess a prime example for us in the South African business is the Dingleton project, where we had to relocate an entire community as part of a mine expansion program. What's unique about the project is that the project was carried out with the community, involved the community right from the start, and we also provided day-to-day -day and short-term opportunities for the community in the project through the construction phase. But we also provided a long-term economic benefit for the community in, in that the environment that we created from a live, work, play point of view, it was much better than what was there before we started the project. You know, it's clear that never before has the world needed more the type of professionals that we embody in the Hatch family. Engineers, scientists, technologists and advisors. And they expect partners like Hatch to support them in these goals. Together, we intend to do that by working with you to innovate and bring to you exceptional ideas with exceptional services. The good news is, at Hatch, we can do this by living our values and by living our commitment to be entrepreneurs with a technical soul. Our clients need us to bring technical expertise and understanding of how to bring about change and sustainable improvements to their operations. Superficial knowledge of how best past practices and flashy consulting frameworks work is no longer enough. Also, just data-driven digital approaches without understanding how things work is not enough. Digitalization is accelerating. The exciting reality is that through digital technologies, we can address complex challenges such as remoteness, safety, productivity, and environmental compliance. And by addressing these challenges and making improvements to their operations, our clients can simultaneously improve their stakeholder image and brand performance. As we move from a mechanical era 65 years ago to a digital era as we look forward now, our hope is that the spirit of innovation that the world has and companies like Hatch can bring can help us manage and, and, and tackle these challenges. We need to ensure that the businesses of the future have the infrastructure they need to thrive such as transport, energy, waste, water, digital, and so on. We develop strategies to drive impact, help clients to prioritise action, and support delivery of liveable cities. An economics-led approach ensures that our clients are clear on the rationale and priorities for investment. Clearly these great challenges and the global need that comes from them requires Hatch to continue to adapt. And you've got our commitment that we will. What does that change look like in the future? I'm not sure, we'll, we'll develop that together. I think it means for us continuing to globalize our organization into new geographies. It'll mean investing in new adjacencies to our traditional services. And importantly, bringing in and developing these ever broader ranges of professional services. It also means becoming an even more diverse organization than we already are. That means Diversity of experience, diversity of education, of gender, of race, of culture, and of sexual orientation. That's how we will challenge the status quo and better tackle these awesome challenges of the future. And together, if we do this, I'm sure that our clients will continue to see us as the most relevant professional services firm on the planet over the next 65 years. And wouldn't that be a wonderful legacy for our future generations.